In this example, we're going to see how to use C sharp events. And specifically, we're going to create our own events and our own event handler. Now, the work in this particular movie is based on the delegates movie. So if you haven't watched that one, you should go back and watch it now because events need delegates to work. And it's important that you understand delegates before you attempt this movie. So there's four steps involved in declaring and triggering C sharp events. The first is that we have to create a delegate, which is the event handler. And just like we did in the previous section, we do that by using the delegate keyword. And then we declare the delegate name. In this case, I've got an event handler, which returns a void value. So there's no return value from this function. And then I declare the parameter list. In this case, there's an integer parameter and a string parameter. Now inside the class that's going to implement this event, I need to use the event keyword. So what I do is I define my class and I do that normally with my class definition. And then somewhere in my class, I do something like this. I say public and then the word event in front of the event handler delegate name. And then I give it a name which is going to be used by the consumer of this class to hook onto my event. So somewhere else in the code, someone who's using this class is going to write something like this. They'll write my class and then some variable name, in this case object, equals new my class. So now they've created an instance of this class. Now what they want to do is listen for, or sometimes the word subscribe is used to this event. To do that, they'll use the my event property, which I've declared up there in my class. They'll use the plus equals operator to specify a handler function that will be used to handle that event. This is called subscribing to an event and it adds the handler function to the list of functions that the my event is going to broadcast to. Then all I have to do is declare that function. Here I've got a handler function and notice that it matches the same format as the delegate that I declared in the first line up there. It's a void function and it takes two parameters, an integer and a string, and then it implements whatever code there is. Now, this is the function that's going to be called whenever that event happens. And you can see that there's the plus equals operator that subscribes to the event. If you wanted to have your code to stop listening to an event, you would simply use the minus equals operator and the same name of the function that you use to subscribe with. So let's take a look at this in action in real code. All right, so I've got my using events example open. And here's the program code. And over in my snippets, I've scrolled down to the using the events section. So let's just take this one step at a time. I'm going to first copy over the delegate declaration for my event handler. So I'm going to copy that and paste it inside my namespace here outside my program class. And this basically tells the C sharp compiler, hey, there's going to be this thing called a delegate, which is an event handler, and it takes a string argument, and I'll supply that later, don't you worry about it, but it's going to be coming along. Okay, now let's go ahead and declare a class. And this is an example class that's just going to raise an event that other people can listen to. And I'll put that class declaration up here above my program. So let's take a look at the class declaration, and then we'll go further. Here in my class, I've got a member variable for this class on line 13, and it's called the value. I've also got an event handler for value changed here on line 14. So whenever this string value here called the value changes, I'm going to raise an event so that people who are using this class can listen for it and say, oh, the value changed. Then I've got a property right here starting on line 16. And if you're not familiar with properties, you can go back and watch the section of this course on properties. But I'm exposing a public string property named val. And you'll notice that I'm only supplying a setter, which starts here on line 18. So the setter does two things. First, it sets the value of the value member variable to whatever the value supplied to the property was. And then it calls the value changed event here on line 21. So anyone who's subscribed to listening to this event is going to get notified that the value has changed. And it passes in the value of this private the value member right here as the first argument. All right, so all that's left to do now is go back over to the snippets and copy over the code here that listens for the event. And I'm going to put that in my main. So let's go through this line by line. Here on line 30, 
I'm creating a new instance of my event example class, and that's this class right here, the one that implements the event. And I've got a variable called my EVT. Then on line 32, I say my EVT dot value changed, which is the name of the event, right? Let's go back up. You can see there on line 14, that's the value changed event. Plus equals new my event handler, which is the name of the delegate. And then I need to supply the name of the function that's going to handle that event. And the reason there's a red squiggle there right now is because I haven't declared the my EVT underscore value changed function. So let's go do that right now. Back over in the snippets, I'm going to copy this function right here. This is my EVT value changed. And I'm going to copy that and paste it. And I'm going to paste it below the main function. So now you can see the little red squiggle error has gone away because now I have a function which is going to handle the event. And let's just take a quick look at the event handler. So here on line 46, you can see that in the function, all we do is just write out the value of that argument that was passed to us. And if we scroll back up to the class, remember that when we call this event, we're going to pass in the string that is represented by the private the value member of my class here. So now we're pretty much just about done. All we need to do is take a look at what lines 34 through 41 are doing. What I've got here is a string variable, and then I have a do while loop. And what's going to happen is I'm going to read a line of text from the console, and if that string is not equal to the value of exit, I'm going to set the public property of the my EVT object to that string. Let's scroll back up. That's going to cause the setter of this property to trigger. It's going to set the value of the, the value member variable to that string, and it's going to trigger the event. And so this loop is going to just keep right on executing until I type in the word exit. And when the word exit gets entered, the program will terminate because there's no more code after this in the main function. All right, so let's actually run this. Okay, so now the program is waiting for me to put in a string, and I'm going to put in the word Joe. And you can see that when I set the value of that string, the event handler gets triggered, my event handler gets called, the string gets passed in as the argument, and we're just writing out that string. And I can type in another string. And once again, the event handler gets called. I can call yet another string. And I can go on and on like this, but now I'm just going to change the value to exit, and then the program terminates. So that's how you declare an event handler and an event in C-sharp using delegates and the event keyword.